Hey lollies, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Lauren, but I'm also known as Miss Lollipop Sims on Twitch and TikTok. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to install Reshade for The Sims 4 and how to get all your current G-Shade presets to work with Reshade. A few little disclaimers that I just want to go ahead and get clear before we jump into today's video. Firstly, is you cannot use Reshade for Mac. Unfortunately, it does not work with Mac as of the date of this video. I don't know if it changes in the future. My Radiance preset that I'm going to be showing you guys how to install was originally made with G-Shade, but there's been some major issues that came to light with G-Shade and the fact that they've implemented malware into their software. It's basically like software that can mess with your computer. So I do not recommend using G-Shade and I do recommend that you uninstall it. And I would recommend that you guys swap to Reshade. This tutorial is also assuming that you guys don't have Reshade or G-Shade installed on your Sims 4. This is literally like a bare bones from scratch tutorial. And just as a general disclaimer, Reshade can also make your game slower. However, it can depend on whatever presets you're using. Uh, you might not even notice the difference, but you know, even on my computer that is very fast, I do notice a very small difference. For any of you guys who've got slower computers, I am gonna share some tips and tricks to get Reshade to work as fast as possible. Right, so now that we've got all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. So first up, we're gonna be having a look at my Tumblr page, which if you guys wanna go ahead and grab the link to this, the link will be down in the description. As always, you guys can go ahead and grab this. So first things first is my Radiance preset, which is a preset that I've actually made for The Sims 4. These are some screenshots that compare my Radiance preset in comparison to the EA lighting. So obviously Radiance is on the right and the EA without any sort of lighting effects or anything is on the left. Obviously it very much brightens up your game. Uh, very, very pretty, lots of saturation. It also adds in really nice shadows. Um, and just in general, I absolutely love my preset. Maybe I'm biased, you know? <laughs> Maybe I'm a little biased. <laughs> but look, I wanted to make my own preset considering there's always things that I like tweaking about other people's presets um, just to get it, you know, to my own personal preference. So I was like, why not make my own, you know? <laughs> These are the links that you guys are gonna need to be taking a look at. We have the Reshade download, which is actually where you guys are gonna go ahead and install the Reshade software. We also have the G-Shade shaders download because to be able to use this preset, you're gonna need the shaders that came with G-Shade. You guys are also gonna need this even if you don't use my preset and you're just using this tutorial for all your other G-Shade presets if you guys don't use my own. So these are the links to download my presets. The first one is a gameplay friendly preset. So this one is just one that you can use in general, you know, gameplay, one that I use like in my streams and in my YouTube videos. I've also got one that can be used for build screenshots. I've also got a Sims screenshot, which is just for my general Sims screenshots. And I've also got a Sims screenshots with Bloom. We're gonna go ahead and get the presets installed. Now you can have all the presets installed at one time and you can just switch between whatever one you're using. So I'm gonna go ahead and install all four of them, but obviously you guys don't have to. If you don't take any screenshots of your Sims or builds and you just wanna use the standard preset, you can just install this one. But I'm gonna show you guys how to install all for. We're going to go ahead and click on the link and it's going to open you guys up to my sim file share and you can go ahead and click on the download button and this will download it straight to your computer. Now you'll probably get this message that says that this file can harm your computer. Do not worry about it. It does not harm your computer. Go ahead and click keep on that. Then I'm also going to install the build screenshots, the sim screenshots and the sim screenshots with bloom. I'm going to open all of these up. Okay, so now we should have all of my presets installed. So we're gonna go to our downloads folder on our computer. So you guys should see a file explorer. You can go ahead and click on this. If you guys have installed mods for The Sims 4 before, they should be in the same place where you download your mods. So you should see them just here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab these files and I'm gonna move them to the desktop just to make it easier to see. Okay, so I've got these on the desktop. Now I'm gonna go back to the Tumblr page and we are gonna go ahead and get Reshade installed. This is the actual program that is gonna allow us to use any of the presets that we download. And this should you link you to this page just here. Go ahead and click on the download button in purple in the middle. Click download Reshade 5.7 with full add-on support. It gives you a little message at the top that said this build is intended for single player games only and causes bans in multiplayer games, which obviously the Sims is a single player game, so you don't have to worry about that. Go ahead and click OK. 
And as you can see, it says again that you need to go ahead and click keep on it. This is not a file that can harm your computer. So again, do not worry. This is gonna be found in the downloads folder in your file libraries and downloads. Now we can go ahead and get the program ran. So I want you guys to go ahead and double click on this. It'll give you the same notification that it had a second ago when we downloaded it. Obviously only uses for Sims, you know, and single player games. And now you should be brought to this screen. So this is where it's searching our computer for all of our games that we have on the computer. But you might notice that The Sims 4 is probably not on here. We are gonna have to go browse through the computer to go and find where our Sims game installed. So I'm gonna go and show you guys the three ways how you can find where your Sims game is installed. Your first option is if you guys installed The Sims using the EA app or if you guys installed The Sims using Origin. So the EA app is just the newer version of Origin. So as you can see, my Sims game is in here. This is how I use The Sims 4. So your game is gonna be located in your file explorer just here. Then go ahead and click on this PC and click on your C drive. So this will be whatever your first drive is. As long as it says C drive, that will be your main drive. Then you're gonna click on program files x86. In here, you should see an origin games folder. And then in here, you should see the Sims 4. Then from here, go ahead and click on game. And you're gonna be led to a bin and bin le folder. This one's quite important because each person will use a different bin depending on whether they've got a newer computer or an older computer. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to know which bin to click on. So first thing first, go down to the bottom and click here and type in system information. Now, as you can see, it already shows us our best match and this is our system information application. Go ahead and click on this. And I want you guys to have a look right here where it says system type. Now, as you can see on my computer, it says X64 based PC. Now for most of you guys, it should say the same thing. However, it might also say X32 based PC. For your system type shows X64 based PC. You can go ahead and close this down. You are gonna go click on the bin and your Sims game is gonna be this one right here. The Sims 4 underscore X64. If your computer showed that you had a 32-bit based PC, then your Sims game is gonna be located in bin underscore LE, and yours is gonna be just the Sims 4 without the X64 at the end. Most of you guys should be in this normal bin folder. This is actually like an older version of the game that is no longer updated, but it is for like older computers. So some of you guys might be on this one and you can install Reshade just as normal. So this is where your Sims 4 is located. So what I want you guys to go ahead and do is click up here on this little library where it shows you like the path that you've gone through. Left click on it and then it should highlight it in blue. Then go ahead and right click and click copy on this. We're gonna need this path quite a lot during this tutorial. So what I would recommend is actually going onto your computer, loading up Notepad, which every Windows PC should have. So just go ahead and type in Notepad. It should just open up a nice little notepad like this. Now I want you to go ahead and right click in here and click paste. And this should paste the path that we're gonna need to go to find our Sims game and where it is installed. So just make a note of that really quick. So I'm just gonna put this over to the corner just so that we don't lose it. So now what you can go ahead and do is click the browse button right here. You can go ahead and grab our pathway from there, highlight it, copy it. And then you can go ahead and delete whatever is in here right click and paste in here and click enter and you should be in your game bin or bin le folder whatever one it is now i want you to go ahead and double click on the sims 4.x64 and now your pathway should be shown in here and reshade is now finding the sims where it should be you guys can just go ahead and click on next and wait for the next step now, for any of you guys who have installed The Sims using Steam, I'm gonna show you guys a tutorial on how you find your own Sims game, because it's gonna be in a different place than if you installed it with Origin Games. If any of you guys do use the Origin app or the EA app, and you still can't find your Sims game, hold your horses, because in the third step, I'm gonna show you guys how to find it regardless of whether you've installed through Steam or EA. Go to your Windows button just here and type in Steam, and then it will load up your Steam. I want you guys to go ahead and click on your libraries folder. All right, so once you're in the libraries folder on Steam, you should be able to see the Sims 4 in your libraries. So go ahead and right click on the Sims 4, scroll down to manage, 
and then look on browse local files. You're going to be brought to your Sims 4 folder, but this isn't actually where the Sims 4 is installed. So from here, you need to go ahead and click on your game folder. Now you are brought to a bin and bin le folder. Depending on what type of computer you've got will depend on where your Sims game is installed in the bin folder or in the bin le folder. So I want you guys to go down to your Windows button or your start button down here. Go ahead and type in system information. Click it. And right here, it says system type x64 based PC. Now, for some of you guys, it might say x32 based PC. For everybody that says x64 based PC, you are going to be using the standard bin folder and your Sims game is going to be located right here. The Sims 4 underscore x64.exe. For anybody that has the system type x32 based PC, you are going to be clicking on the bin underscore le folder. Your Sims game is going to be the Sims 4.exe. Obviously, for my computer, since it's x64, I'm going to be in this folder, but you know, everybody else, if you've got a 32 base, you're going to be in the other folder. So I want you guys to go ahead and click up here in your path. This is the path of, you know, how we got to this folder. Go ahead and left click here and it will turn this blue. Then right click on it and click copy. Now I want you to go into your Windows start button again and type in notepad. From here, it's gonna open up a nice notepad over here. It might be a bit bigger than mine, but I've made mine small. <laughs> and then I want you to go ahead and right click in here and click paste. And this will make a copy of the pathway that we just went through. Now from here, I want you to go ahead and click on the browse button back on the reshade setup that we had open. Make sure you go ahead and grab the pathway again, copy it, go into here, right click, click paste, and then click enter on your keyboard and you should be led right to this folder. Then you're gonna go ahead and click on the Sims 4 underscore x64.exe and click open. Now for any of you guys who had the 32 based PC, obviously you're gonna be in the bin LE and you're gonna click on the Sims 4.exe and then you're gonna click open. And then go ahead and click next and wait until I go ahead and give you guys the next step. Okay, so for anybody that's watched the tutorial so far and is thinking, wait, I haven't found the Sims 4 yet. I can't find it. I don't know what's going on. My Sims 4 isn't located where I, you know, where I told you to look. That is absolutely fine. I'm gonna show you another way in the way that you can find your Sims. So go ahead and go down to your Windows button and type in The Sims 4. And you should have an app that shows as your best match. It should just look like this with the same icon. Go to the right and then click on Open File Location right here. And on here, it should show you to a shortcut. Now this isn't actually where the game is installed. This is just a shortcut. I want you guys to go ahead and right click on this. And then from here, you should see an open file location option from here as well. Go ahead and left click on that. Now you should be brought to where your Sims 4 is installed. As you can see the Sims 4 x64.exe. This is the Sims 4 and how you load it up. So I want you to go ahead and left click up here on your path. Uh, it should turn blue. Go ahead and right click on it and click copy. And now I want you to open up a notepad. So go to Windows and type in notepad. There you go. And it should, uh, this notepad is on every Windows PC. So you should be able to just go ahead and open it. And now I want you to right click in here and click paste. And this will make a note of where your Sims 4 game is installed. You're going to need to make a note of this because we're going to need this quite a lot in this tutorial. But now you've got your pathway for your game. So now I want you to go back to your reshade setup, go ahead and copy the pathway that you have. So you can go ahead and right click on that, click copy. Now I want you to click the browse button on the reshade setup, go up to the top where it's got this little, you know, libraries option, left click this pathway and click delete on the keyboard and then right click in here and click paste. And it should paste your pathway that you've got in here as well. Go ahead and click the enter button. And now you can see it links us right to the Sims 4 game folder. And it's uh, the only .exe in this folder is the Sims 4 underscore x64.exe. Go ahead and click open. Now I'm going to go ahead and click next and everyone should be on the same step. So we're all picking up together, okay? <laughs> So you guys should see select the rendering API The Sims 4 uses. It'll just go ahead and click on DirectX 9. That is because The Sims 4 uses DirectX 9. Don't select anything else because The Sims 4 does not use them. So go ahead and click on the next button. 
And now it says select a preset to install. So choose a preset file, which is a .ini, and it will configure Resave to use this from the start. So go ahead and click on the little browse button just here. Now we need to locate where we downloaded my Radiance preset. So you guys might have left it in your downloads folder. I'm not too sure, but I actually put mine on my desktop, if you guys remember. So it should say the same thing as this, Miss Lollipop in brackets, Radiance Gameplay.ini. Just make sure you go ahead and find where you put yours. You might have moved it. You might have left it in your downloads, wherever you put it at the start of this tutorial. Go ahead and use the gameplay option or whatever one you're going to be most commonly using. I'm going to be using gameplay. Go ahead and click on open on there and you can go ahead and click on the next button. Now it's asking us what effect packages we're going to install. So these are all the shaders that actually reshade uses. So by standard, obviously you can't unselect. This is always active. We now have sweet effects, astray effects and legacy effects. So leave all of these selected because my preset and pretty much everybody, else, everybody else's preset also uses these shaders. I also want you guys to go ahead and select Quint by Marty McFly. Go ahead and click on next. Make sure all of them are ticked. Click next. And now we are finished. You can go ahead and click on the finish button. So now we're just going to go and double check that reshade is correctly installed and everything's working fine. So I want you guys to go back into your file explorer. We went ahead and copied our path to our Sims 4 to make it easier to get to so that we wouldn't lose it. So go ahead and highlight that again and click copy. And then right at the very top where it's got a little picture of a home button, left click this and click delete. And then right click and click paste and it should paste our folder right in there. Click the enter button on your keyboard. Right, so in here you should now have a new folder called reshade shaders. And there should also be a bunch of other files, reshade.ini, reshade2.ini, all of these other things in this folder. So what we want to go ahead and do is actually make a folder inside this bin that is going to store all of our presets that we're going to use so I want you to go ahead and right click in here and click new and scroll over to folder. And it's also very important that you type this correctly. Okay. So make sure you copy it word for word. So you should be typing reshade dash presets. So now we've got our reshade presets folder. We can go ahead and open that. And of course it will be empty. Now we're going to go ahead and grab any presets that you want to use on reshade and move them all into our reshade presets folder. So this is going to include my radiance preset, but also any other presets that you guys download and want to use for reshade. So I'm going to go down to the bottom to our file library. I'm going to right click and click file explorer. This is going to open up a second file explorer so that you can navigate between two folders at once. And if you guys remember, I downloaded my Radiance presets and I moved them to my desktop. But you guys might still have kept the presets in your downloads folder. So also make sure you check that folder. But if you did the same thing as me and moved it to the desktop, then you should be able to find them right here. They're the files ending in .ini, you know, Miss Lollipop Radiance .ini. All reshade presets files, they're all, they all end in .ini and they should all say in the type configuration settings. I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag off all of these and then I'm gonna move these files into the reshade presets folder. But I've also got a bunch of other reshade and g-shade presets that I really like using in my game. So I'm gonna go ahead and also move those over. So these I've also put on my desktop as well, which are all these files just here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag these into the reshade presets folder as well. And now, as you can see, my reshade presets, as well as all the other ones that I want to use, they're all in this folder and ready for me to use when I load the game up. Now you guys can go ahead and click back into the bin folder. So go ahead and click the back button. And now we're going to be looking in the reshade shaders folder. So go ahead and get that opened. And now you should see two folders saying shaders and textures. So I want you guys to go back to the Tumblr page that I linked you guys to. I also have a link to G Shade Shader Download. So go ahead and left click on this and it should start downloading a G Shade.zip folder instantly. So just go ahead and leave that to run and open. I'm going to open up another file explorer. So right click, click File Explorer. Now I'm going to go to my downloads folder because this is where my G Shade.zip folder installed. So you're going to go ahead and right click on here and you should have a button to extract all. Go ahead and click on extract and then click the extract button just right here. 
make sure that this is text to show extracted files when complete now you just sit back and you wait it should say copying you know items from gshade to gshade you should have an, a pop-up that comes up a folder and it should say gshade shaders and gshade presets so i want you guys to go into gshade shaders and then go into shaders from here now go back to your reshade shaders the folder that we left open and click shaders so i want you guys to go ahead and copy all the shaders that are in the g shade shaders shaders folder go ahead and drag uh click and drag all of those uh slide them over into your reshade shaders shaders folder click move to shaders it will ask you do you want to replace 63 files go ahead and click skip these files and now you should have all of your G shade shaders installed to reshade. Now I want you guys to go back on G shade shaders. So click the back button and you can also see a textures folder. Go ahead and click on that. Go back to your reshade shaders folder, click back and you should also see a textures folder. Go ahead and click on that. Now copy all of the G shade shaders textures. Go ahead and click and drag on all of those and drag them onto the right into textures. Go ahead and click skip these files so you don't replace the current ones. Go ahead and close this, close all this other stuff, but just make sure that you leave open your reshade shaders folder, you know, where we've installed reshade. Go ahead and click back. And I want you guys to go into your shaders folder in reshade. This should still be in your Sims 4 folder. So in here, you're gonna have some duplicates of files that you've already got. Now click Q on your keyboard and it should link you to the Quint files that are further down in this folder. And I want you guys to delete them from here. You guys are also going to need to click on your keyboard and click C and then scroll down from here and there should be a, a file called clarity.fx. You can also go ahead and delete this because you've already got this in the folder. You can also go ahead and click B on your keyboard and delete blooming HDR. You don't need that because you've already got that in your stray FX folder. So go ahead and delete that too. And I also want you guys to go ahead and click S on your keyboard and scroll down to smart denoise. You are not going to need this one. So you can go ahead and click on that and click delete on there as well. And now we should be completely done and ready to go ahead and start up The Sims 4 and use reshade for the first time. <laughs> It might have taken us a while to get there, but we got there eventually, guys. <laughs> load up The Sims 4 however you would normally load it up. Mine's just down here, you know, on my taskbar. So go ahead and click on that. Now, if you guys see right at the very top left, there's a black bar that says reshade and then the version. And then it on your first time loading up your Sims game with reshade installed, that might take a really long time. Your game might freeze. That black bar might stay up there. Just sit back and wait. It might even take, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes if your computer is quite slow. Just wait until it loads. It will load eventually. So just give it a bit of time to load. Okay, so finally the game has loaded up. So go ahead and click on the home button on your keyboard. You should see a button that says home on it. Go ahead and click on that. This is the button that will load up reshade. This should be automatically what, you know, the button that you use. For some people that have laptops, uh, you guys might need to press like the FN button and then there'll be a button that says home on it or something like that. Now that we've got reshade loaded up, your guys might not look the same as mine. So you might not have anything set here um it might not even have the name up here this is most likely because you're installing reshade for the first time so don't worry about it because we're just going to go ahead and find our presets folder really quick so if you guys remember earlier we saved our path to get to our sims folder in our notepad so go ahead and alt tab out of the game and load up your notepad this is the path that will get us to our game. Obviously, for you guys that have installed The Sims 4 using Steam, your path will be different. But either way, you've got your own pathway saved. So go ahead and highlight it. Right click and click copy on this. And then you can minimize this and go back into the game. And when you go ahead and click over here, you can see that this bit hovers up the top. Um, yours might say my radiance preset. It might say somebody else's. It might not say anything. That's absolutely fine. Just go ahead and click on it. And right at the very top here, I want you guys to go ahead and highlight if there is anything there to just go ahead and get rid of it. So just go ahead and highlight it. Click the delete button on your keyboard and then go ahead and click control V on your keyboard and it will paste exactly to the bin folder that we saved. This is where we made our reshade presets folder. So then you can go ahead and double click on that 
and it will open up the folder that will contain all your reshade and g-shade presets. So I'm going to go ahead and now select my Miss Lollipop Radiance Gameplay.ini, select it and then click select down here and then it should apply. And now if you guys are using my Radiance preset, you should have the exact same shaders selected as me. You're also going to go onto the settings tab right at the very top. Go ahead and click on there. And this will be where you guys might want to change some different details. So you've got your overlay key here. This is the key that you use to open up reshade. Now, obviously, depending on um, if it, you know, the home key was a bit of a struggle to find if you guys are on a laptop keyboard, you might want to change this to an easier key. Uh, you can go ahead and click in here. If it's already got home in there and you want to get rid of it, go ahead and click the backspace button and then it should say click to set keyboard shortcut. Then go ahead and press a key on your keyboard. I'm going to press home again. And as you can see, now it says home, so it's set up. For your effect toggle key, I've got this set to just a random key on my keyboard. So you can just go ahead and select any key you like, but again, one that you don't use very often. This key will make it so that reshade takes off any shaders. So if you wanna see what the game looks like without reshade or any presets applied, this will take it off, which is great for when you're like, hey, look at my game, look how pretty it looks. And ah, this is how EA makes it look. <laughs> right, so now I want you guys to scroll down to your screenshots folder. And in here, you can see the screenshot key. This might not have anything selected. It might have something already selected. I don't know. But I have my screenshot key set to, set to print screen. But you guys might want to set it to a button that's easier for you to reach or easier for you to get to. Now for your screenshot path, this is going to be where all your, you know, reshade screenshots are saved. So I have mine set to D and then a D drive and then I have it set to Sims 4 images. So I'm just going to alt tab out of the game a second. So I'm just going to go to my D drive, which is just right here. Go ahead and click on Sims 4 images. And this is where Reshade stores all of my images. So as you can see, I take loads of screenshots of my Sims. <laughs> These are some screenshots with like a green screen background to cut it out really easily. Um, and yeah, I can get some really, really pretty screenshots of my Sims in here. So you guys might want to just make a folder on your computer. I don't know if you want to use like your pictures folder. You might want to use that. You might want to use your, you know, a different drive, or you might even want to use the default place where the Sims game saves your images. So, um, if you guys go to documents and then electronic arts and then the Sims 4, and in here you actually have a screenshots, um, you actually have a screenshots folder. So you guys might even want to set up so that all of your screenshots save to there. So you can go ahead and do the same thing that we did earlier when we were trying to find The Sims 4. You can go ahead and click on your folders up here, left click it. It will turn blue and then right click and click, click copy. So it will copy this pathway. And now you can go back to your Sims game and in your screenshot path, go ahead and click on this. Click control V and it will paste whatever pathway you just copied. And now all of your screenshots that you take with Reshade will store here. If you try and take a photo in game with like the C key or, you know, the usual camera in game, it's not going to apply Reshade on any of those photos because technically Reshade is like an external program. So you have to make sure you take screenshots with this screenshot key and go and get them from the screenshot path. Hopefully that makes sense. I also make sure to have my show screenshot message applied so that when I take a screenshot, I'm going to show you guys an example. I'm going to press print screen and now a bar up here displays to say that a successful screenshot was taken. So I'm going to go and load up into the game and I'm going to show you guys how to edit my preset or how to, you know, edit other people's presets and set everything up. So let's go ahead and jump into game and I will show you guys how to get sorted with presets and how to use reshade. Okay, so we are now in game and just ignore the lot. Okay, <laughs> this is where I take all my screenshots in game. As you can see, I've got like a green screen at the back. So just like ignore this, pretend that this is not here. <laughs> Anyways, we're just gonna look here. So you guys should be loaded up into your game. You should be loaded up into a household and your game should look substantially different to how it looked before. Even if you're not using my own reshade preset, I'm sure somebody else's will look substantially different too. So yeah, your colors should be different. You know, there might even be extra shadows around here, things like that. So um, you guys might also be getting some really, really weird like shadow glitches. Um, if you guys have got MXAO on, um, the screen might even be black. You might not even be able to see your Sims game. So don't panic about that. Okay, I want you guys to go and click on edit global pre-processor definitions. And now I want you guys to click on global. You should be here. And you might see that reshade depth input is reversed. This, this number might be set to one. 
go ahead and delete it and set it to zero. This should fix all of your weird black, darker, like black issues that you guys get for some reason. Sometimes this happens on like new installs of reshade. So just make sure that this but this number is definitely set to zero right here. And once you click off of this, it will reload and it should fix like all the weird issues that you guys had if you if you did have any. So if you guys are using any of my presets, so this is gonna include my Radiance gameplay preset. It will also include the build screenshots, the sim screenshots with Bloom and the one without. You guys are going to need to go into your options in game, uh, click on game options from here and make sure that you've turned edge smoothing off. My reshade preset already includes edge smoothing and you're gonna get issues with shadows and just weird things going on. So just make sure that you've set this to off and everything should be good. So make sure you do that. Uh, you might also notice that like as you scroll over, it looks like the UI is transparent, like, you know, like here, for example, that's just what happens if you want your game to like look pretty and have like nice shadows. But I'm gonna show you guys how to like turn those off and you know, if you guys don't like that, and um, if you've got performance mode already selected, if it's checked, go ahead and make sure you check it off. It might like take a second to load. As you can see, it's taking a little bit of time. Okay, so now you should see all of these settings at the bottom, which are quite overwhelming, but you guys shouldn't need to worry about any of these if you guys are just using other people's presets. This is only if you're making your own. So the first thing you guys are gonna need to make sure that you do, if you're gonna use my preset with shadows. So I'm gonna show you guys, this MXAO is a shadow shader. So if I turn it off, you can see the game to the right. All the shadows instantly disappear and it just looks like the game originally. So this MSAA shader adds edge smoothing so if i take this off everything looks more harsh and edges are all like you know jaggedy like you can see down here so if you guys have got a slower computer a laptop or just something that doesn't really run very well and you're trying to use my gameplay radiance preset for you know to play games and it's running not very well i would highly recommend turning off mxao and SMAA because these are two shaders that are quite taxing on the computer. Any other people's shaders, if they're using MXAO, want to probably turn those off if your computer can't handle it. If your guys' computer can handle it, you can leave this stuff on. If you guys do go ahead and turn these shaders off, so you can see they're unselected now, then you guys can go back into your options in game and you can turn your edge smoothing back on to whatever it was before, low, medium, high. You can now see that in my game, my game runs better, you know, it's a lot smoother. And and also there's no, like in the UI, there's no um, shadows going through my sim or through my needs. And also my text is like not all jaggedy and everything. That's just an unfortunately a downside of using MXAA and an edge smoothing shader, but that's just what you have to deal with <laughs> if you want a nicer looking game in general. Um, but if you guys are happy with it, you're more than welcome to leave it like this and the game will run better. You shouldn't really notice a performance drop like really at all, but. I like to play with my MSAA and my MXAO on. And as you can see, look at that, the depth, the, the shadows, the darkness, I love it. <laughs> you can go ahead and also turn performance mode on and this will give a performance boost to your game. So I'd recommend this if you guys are not gonna do any edits to your to the preset. Even if you're gonna swap between presets, you can leave performance mode on. While I'm playing the game and just using it and I'm not touching reshade, I just leave performance mode on all the time. I wanna show you guys how to swap presets between other presets as well. So um, say for example, let me just bring my sim out here so we can just get a nice little like, you know, view of her. So go ahead and open up your uh, reshade tab again. Obviously mine is already set to home, but you guys might've changed it. Now you can go up to the top and you can change to whatever preset you would like. So if you guys have just installed my preset, you might have your gameplay preset, the build, the Sims screenshots with Bloom and Sims screenshot. I'm gonna show you guys an example of the Sims screenshots. So go ahead and click on Sims screenshots and click select. You might notice that this crazy like blur starts in the background. So this is a DOF, which is a depth of field uh, shader, which creates the effect of a real camera in real life. So I don't know if you guys have seen, you know, when you take a photo on a professional camera and it adds a really nice blurred background on, si uh, it, <laughs> on Sims. It adds a really nice blurred background on people or, or whatever the subject focus is. So it blurs the background. So this is what the screenshots preset does. It makes it so that the, the background around 
your sim is nice and blurred and personally i love love this so much so you can see if you guys just want to take a sim screenshot but you don't want the background to be blurred you can just select this and it will just take off that blurred background so you can just go ahead and you know take that away if you guys don't want the shadows you can go ahead and take the shadows off which is mxao you might also want to go ahead and try out my sims screenshots uh with bloom preset which you can go ahead and select and this is the option with bloom so you can see that my sim is like a little bit more blurred but in general she's just brighter and yeah like radiating almost now you might also notice when you come away like everything is really blurred so i wouldn't suggest playing the game with those sim screenshot presets activated i would definitely recommend going and like turning off the depth of field option or you know going back to the gameplay preset while you're not taking screenshots because it's just a lot you know to deal with um and you guys also might want to see the build screenshot preset so you know what let's just quickly run over here to this random towny build um i don't know who built this build but it's you know it's fine i guess so you guys might want to go ahead and use my build screenshots preset which you might notice some um, depth of field applicators here and also you know an extra shadow so in this preset it's got more shadows than usual and it's also got customized depth of field when i'm in the game like everything keeps moving and like going in and out the blurs are like all crazy if you go ahead and press the tab camera right here and it will turn tab mode on this is how you take like pretty screenshots if i click with my left mouse button it unlocks my mouse button and now, as you can see, when I move my mouse around the screen, it like makes things blurred, unblurs them. If I want to make the subject focus this house, if I highlight over the house, it will blur everything else. If I want to make the subject focus the mountains in the background, it will blur the house at the front. So you can see I can customize whatever I want to be in focus. And if you guys are interested in using anybody else's presets, again, you can just click up here and select whoever else is. Some of my personal favorites are El Chris's G Shade, which is just this one here. I'm going to go ahead and click select and apply it. I absolutely love this preset. I use this one a lot for screenshots, which is why I've got depth of field on. I can go ahead and get that turned off. And this is what this preset looks like. Um, I will also leave a link in the description. I love her preset so much and they're absolutely beautiful. I think you guys will really like them. And I also use the Sassy Frassy uh, preset as well. I'm not sure who this one is by, but I can leave it in the description as well. This is what this one looks like. Also one of my personal favorites. Just gonna go ahead and take depth of field off. It's quite similar to mine, except the colors are more saturated so everything's a little bit brighter i also really really like tofu by elkris as well and i customize this preset quite a lot i really like it with like these settings on it makes these really really pretty pretty background and i love the way the sim looks it's so like nice and i don't know like cloudy almost like milky oh, it's, it's absolutely beautiful i love this preset so if you guys want um any of these presets obviously i'll leave them down in the description so you guys can go ahead and download them but you're more than welcome to just download my radiance preset if that's what you would like um you know but i personally like switching and changing it up every now and then depending on how i'm feeling that day <laughs> So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully it was helpful. Um, I hope that you guys managed to download Reshade fine and get everything sorted. And I also hope that um, maybe you learned a little bit about Reshade and how to use the shaders. Let me know if you guys struggled. If you guys have any issues, please let me know and I will try and help everybody out in the comment section. I will try my hardest. It's very difficult considering I'm not at any of your PCs, but I will still try my best. <laughs> so I love you guys so much. Remember to go ahead and leave a like and comment whether you enjoyed today's video and whether you got on with it okay. Also, remember to go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll get notified every single time I upload, which means you won't miss any of my future videos. And also remember to go ahead and follow me on my other socials to stay updated at Miss Lollipop Sims on Twitch, TikTok and Instagram. And also go ahead and follow me on Miss Lollipop Sim on Twitter, where I update you guys uh, quite regularly on drama that's going on. <laughs> so I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching today's video. I will speak to you all in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your morning, afternoon or evenings and I will speak to you all later. I love you guys. Bye.